Alright. Kia ora, konnichiwa, and good day, mates. Hey, it's Trevor. And Tom from Green Shorts. Today is video three of the camper build. And today, we are gonna start adding stuff back on. We've been doing a lot of taking off and demo, and now we're gonna do some grinding and welding to build out the rest of this frame. This video series is sponsored by TinkTube. TinkTube uses pipes and a variety of connectors to create the ultimate DIY system for creative tinkers. I've actually got some bar stock that I picked up at the drop room at my local metal supermarket. We've also got all the metal we've cut off this trailer, as well as some other pieces of salvage that we're gonna to use to build this frame out. Let's get started. So the first thing I wanna establish is the width of the trailer up here, as well as the triangle portion going up to the tongue. This bar stock will replace the top half of the angle that I cut off of this piece to get that rigidity back in, and it's gonna establish the width here that's gonna match up nicely with the wheel weld. And I'm gonna want this angle coming in at 45 degrees. So I'm gonna start Trevor off on that grind right there. And so Trevor, this powder coat here is gonna affect the ability of the weld to adhere. So we wanna grind the powder coat off kind of in this area here just to get clean metal to connect that weld. You don't want to get rid of too much metal. You want to go deeper than that? No, that's good. I'm gonna flip the trailer up so I can get to the grinds that need to happen on the bottom of this bar. It'll stand up perfectly, leaning up against the big joist in my garage. <laughs> That's gonna work out nicely. And it'll be pretty safe for what could be a fairly precarious position. That's what I'm talking about, Lincoln. Booyah! Maybe some of my best welds yet. And I think that's because I got all the settings right. Including setting this for .035 wire instead of what I had it set for. <laughs> which I won't tell you. Well, I've got the trailer up like this, and the fact that this is probably the last time I'm gonna be able to lift it like this. I'm gonna go ahead and do some wire brushing on the bottom, do a little painting, and then hit it with some rubberized undercoating.
I was wrong when I measured for this spot for Trevor to grind because I forgot I hadn't added the extensions to the side yet. So I'm gonna redo this spot with the correct measurements. I didn't do anything. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The train's here. I'm really happy with this front triangle here. I was able to salvage a piece of metal from the trailer and I made my own angle iron here with a couple pieces of bar. The area that's got me thinking right now is this. I really don't want this big old chunk of metal coming up into this space because it's gonna pinch my door opening. It's also gonna narrow the trailer here a good bit. So. I think I've decided I am going to cut off the top of this angle here like I did on the front and then go out this way with it, bring it up alongside to, to this point here. I'm gonna clean this up and then box it back in. So a question I've been asking myself throughout this build so far is, how do I handle the fenders? This is a piece of the ACM, two sheets of aluminum with a ABS, I think, core. So this is gonna be the floor and the outer skin of the trailer. So the question I've had is, do I wanna cover up the fender like this or bring it down to the fender like this. In other words, would this reveal look nice? I think I've decided that yes, this is what I want. Definitely gonna want the ACM over the frame so it comes all the way down. The skeleton needs to go inside the frame here, so that's the measurement I need to be working with. You've seen enough grinding. I'm just gonna chop this off. I'm not gonna start building trailers tomorrow, <laughs> but I'm really happy with how this looks. I'm gonna repeat this assembly on the other side of the trailer. That was so awesome. I'm learning. Are you sure you don't want to try a weld yet? No, I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, soon, soon enough. 
It's good to know your limits. Alright. Let me show you how to do a basic weld though. Can I do the thingy? <laughs> so first I'm going to attach the ground to the table. We got that metal table here so the current can travel through that. You need to trim the tip down. Now the wire is going to be feeding out through this with the electricity, the arc, to melt the metal and that's what connects the two pieces of metal. Around that is gas. So a mixture of carbon dioxide and argon that keeps oxygen away from the arc away from the metal. We don't want oxygen to get into that weld and oxidize it because it makes it not as strong. I cut back both pieces of metal with an angle to create a trough for the weld to go in. I need to have space for that weld. All right, you ready? Can I look? <laughs> that is very intimidating. <laughs> You shall learn soon enough. It took some getting used to. <laughs> that looks really good. I wonder how hot it is. That's pretty hot. I don't think I should touch that. No, you should not touch it. To extend the trailer, I'm going to add 22 inches to the length, and I'm going to use this scrap angle iron. I can actually get two 22 inch pieces out of this one. Sturdy. This is a slightly smaller gauge, but I'm not worried. It'll be plenty sturdy. I was running out of bits of metal that were salvaged from the trailer to create my piece all the way across the back here, because it's also going to have to extend out to the, the full width of the trailer. And then I remembered I still had the ramp to cut up. In fact, the length of the ramp is going to be the perfect width for the back end of the trailer. My goal is to place this part of the gate here. It's going to act as a back bumper and and I think a platform for some storage is going to be underneath the raised portion of the back of the camper. That'll make a little more sense later. But I don't think I need all of this mesh, so I'm going to have Trevor trim some of it off. This will be the back bumper. I'm going to have a little bit of that showing, just kind of like a little platform. We're going to cut some of this out. We'll leave this piece in. I am a little bit concerned about adding too much weight behind the axle. So I want to minimize the weight on this as much as possible. So I'll need to trim the ends of the extensions just a little bit because I think the 22 inch measurement was a little bit longer than we needed. However, I want to verify that by having Trevor lay down in the trailer again. In the end, I decided to cut two inches off the length My plan right now for the back of the trailer is to leave a little bit of this mesh exposed as a bumper. And so it'll also serve as some external storage for a shovel, an axe, or something like that. 
That's kind of the profile I'm looking for. I'll make the final decision on that when we get to the skeleton build video. I'm going to put the rigidity back in by adding in some angle iron. But instead of going along this axis, I'm actually going to bring it at an angle. So it's going to be coming from this vertical element into this vertical element. Instead of bringing the stress this way and then across this way, I'm going to go directly from corner to corner. Alright, I'm going to put in the last cross brace here, but before I do that, I need to give credit where credit is due. And that this idea, the diagonal cross bracing, was Trevor's. <laughs> that a boy. I'm still what I would classify as a novice welder. I'm learning, I feel like I'm getting better, but I'm also looking for feedback and suggestions and tips in the comments from you. One tip that I've gotten in the comments that I want to incorporate today is on a cold day like today to preheat my weld. So I'm gonna get this clamped in place and then I'm gonna use my propane torch to preheat the area where I'm going to weld. Yeah, I think that'll hold. And the final weld on this trailer refit is right up here where I started. It's a little chunky for my liking. In fact, this side looks like what I've been told is called a cold weld. So cold because it's raised. Whereas the first weld that I preheated looks less cold. In other words, you can see that the weld is further down in between the two pieces of metal. It's flatter. So that's my understanding. So how about some of you pro welders out there confirm whether I'm right or wrong on this? Of course, one way to fix a cold weld is with a grinder. A little paint, and that'll look like a pro did it. got a four-step paint process I'm gonna use first with rust reformer to hit the spots that are rusty we we'll convert that to a paintable surface then I'm gonna primer the whole thing come back with an appliance epoxy and then finally a rubber undercoating on the external surfaces I'm gonna prep for paint with a light sand paying special attention to the areas that are rusty I'm also going to use the grinder on a few spots that are still a little rough. And now I'm going to primer paying special attention to where I've got bare metal.
Then I'm gonna add a layer of appliance epoxy. Here. The appliance epoxy needs a week to cure before I can put the undercoating on. But that would pretty much look exactly the same as spraying black paint, so I'll spare you that detail. That was a lot more work than I thought. <laughs> Okay. Taking stuff off just meant we had to put stuff back on just in terms of bracing. I'm happy with how this turned out. I, I feel like it was a good reuse of materials that we had. Mm -hmm. And you got to practice some skills. <clears throat> yeah, I was, I was able to do some grinding and I also was able to do some cutting as well, which I haven't done as much. Yeah. So I feel a little more proficient with that tool now? Yeah, for sure. We've reconfigured the trailer, done a whole lot of welding and cutting and grinding and painting and this thing is ready to build out so next week's video is going to be the tink tube skeleton in fact i placed my tink tube order this week and it's on the way good to hear all right thank you to our patrons and members for helping make these videos possible if you'd like to join us on patreon or here in the youtube membership area you can check out the description below. As always, our mission at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green. And save a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next Saturday. Let's go! All right. <laughs>